Have you ever bought something nice for your apartment or your room, brought it home, put it in place, and had the thought, Jesus, my apartment is a piece of shit. Or maybe you bought a new shirt and suddenly you're grabbing for it all the time, waiting for that day in the rotation when you can wear it again, tired of everything you already own. The name for this social consumerist phenomena is called the Diderot effect, and it works on two principles. First, that all the products purchased by a consumer aim to be cohesive with that consumer's identity, with all the products that they already own. Second, that the introduction of a new product, which is desirable but in any way deviant from the existing cohesion, can trigger a process of spiraling consumption. In other words, as much as we decry the dangers of a materialist society, the things we own comprise a significant part of who we are. Our identities are tied up in our clothes and our gadgets and the feng shui of our furniture. More than anything else, we try to find a unity in our possessions and by extension, try to convince ourselves that our identity itself is uniform. The effect was first identified by its namesake, French philosopher Denis Diderot, in an essay called Regrets on Parting with My Old Dressing Gown. Don't know why I did an English accent there, he's French. In the essay, Diderot is given a brand new scarlet dressing gown to replace his worn out one, but soon laments that the luxury of his new item shames all his other possessions. So he goes on a rampage and replaces everything he owns with beautiful new things, eventually putting himself in serious debt. I was the absolute master of my old robe, he says. I have become the slave of my new one. The Diderot effect is at the core of the materialist ethos, prodded by that familiar yearning of keeping up with the Joneses to fit in or even outclass those around us and in the media. We are not capable of stopping at simply upgrading or updating one corner of what we own. We grab feverishly at a better kind of unity, even at the expense of our financial well-being. This poses a problem for companies that produce goods. It's why stuff usually comes in sets, and those sets usually at a discount. It's why IKEA showcases full rooms in their Disneyland-like tour of the kinds of people you can be. Can we be blamed for this materialist craving in us? Well, the answer is definitely yes, but a soft yes. A soft yes for we who are pampered rats within the capitalist construct. Modern men and women laboring, as Rust Cole says, under the illusion of having a self. A cohesive, uniform identity, it seems to us, might be some salve against the chaotic truth that reality is as fractious and self-constructed as we are. One day, we'll have to strike out against this insane consumerism. Until then, the IKEA Spring Living Room set is as good as crack. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. The Diderot Effect is a really interesting social phenomenon tied in with a lot of other things. You can read more about it in the links that I'll put in the description below. All companies that make goods and services deal with this problem. The environmentalist movement, for example, is no exception. Green good producers insist not on buying their stuff, but on replacing the harmful things that you already have. Follow me on Twitter. I love to tweet and try to make people think or laugh or smile or whatever. I just think it's an awesome platform. Um, and uh, I'm gonna put this video on Reddit and hopefully it gets some traction. I'll put the link there when I do and upvote it if you enjoyed this video. Reddit's been awesome in, in spreading uh, the stuff that I make. Uh, and I'll see you next week.